Hey everybody, good evening. Whoops, I'm sideways. <laughs> it's been a while since we've done this. How's everybody doing? I'm going to um, just adjust my camera here. Bear with me. And uh, pull up my notes and we'll get started. It's time for TCB Radio on Facebook Live. Uh, we had a brief uh, couple week intermission or hiatus um, for a bunch of uh, Peter Alden gigs that we had to get through and then Little Krista had the flu, and that wasn't fun, but we got through all that, and we're back, and we're ready to bring you some awesome, brand new Elvis news for this week. I'm going to wait a couple of minutes to give people a chance to tune in, and also, I need a couple extra seconds to pull up my notes, because I'm, uh, I'm a little bit behind tonight, rushing around at the last minute, like usual. So, I hope you guys are doing great. I hope you had a wonderful St. Patrick's Day. We celebrated St. Patrick's Day here in the States. Um, on March 17th, and it was lots of fun. We got some music in the background. You can make it louder. people here. Yay! Lori's here from Scotland. Hi, Lori. So tonight, um, we're going to cover some cool stuff. How We've got details on how you can participate in the Marion Cock 40th Anniversary Elvis Presley Memorial Dinner in Memphis, even if you aren't able to attend Elvis Week. Uh, we've got rumors and speculations flying around about the new Elvis Presley Memphis Visitors Complex, but we have your top ten, top five things you need to know, as well as a link to a full video tour of the new complex. This tour is cool. It includes um, Gladys's Diner and so much more. I'm going to put a link to that um, in the uh, show notes that I put up on the Facebook page after the broadcast. And so much more. Also, um, how you can win one of our brand new Elvis Matters awareness ribbons. So, um, and Trina's here. Hi, Trina. Thank you for tuning in. In spite of this uh, time change and the couple weeks off, Debbie Rogers is here from Oklahoma. Hey, Debbie. Thank you all so much for tuning in live with us tonight. We appreciate it. I also want to do a real quick shout out and thank you to everyone listening to this broadcast in audio form over at Speedway Radio. Um, they should be broadcasting this over at Speedway Radio on Thursday night. So hello to everyone listening via audio. And But mostly, I want to welcome and say hello to everybody watching live right now. Diana Phillips just tuned in. Hey, Diana. Since our little song's over, I'm going to go ahead and show you all our opening video that we have prepared for you, um, produced by the incredible Peter Alden. Like always, we always open the show with this video, so let me go ahead and bring that up on the screen for you. Okay, here it goes. Mike Durbin's here. Hi, Mike. What's up? 
Diana says, it's been a while since I've been here. It feels so good. Let me tell you what, it feels good to me too. It's great to have you back. And uh, it's great to be back with another edition of TCB Radio on Facebook Live. It was a long two weeks. I missed you guys. Uh, it, was, it, was, it was rough. I missed y'all, but glad to be back. Um, okay, so first thing I'm going to do right off the bat, here's how you can win your, uh, your Elvis Matters Awareness Ribbon. It's a beautiful ribbon. I wish I had one to show you, but I know they're on the way because I got the notification <laughs> in my email inbox. I was hoping they'd be here tonight so I could show them to you. But they're gorgeous little white ribbons uh, with uh, ruby, sapphire, and diamond. Not real, but, you know, those color stones on each one. And you can wear, pin it to your shirt. And when people say, what's that ribbon for? You can, it gives you a reason to talk about Elvis and what he means to you and why you love him. And um, so we have um, a big batch of those coming here to uh, the home office of TCB Radio. And I'm going to be mailing them out, giving them out. Um, getting them out to the world as, as quickly as possible. We're going to take a bunch with us to all this week um, in Memphis. <coughs> Excuse me, my, my lingering flu. Um, so the way, uh, the very you want to be the very first winner of the very first uh, Elvis Matters Awareness Ribbon. Here's how you do it. Uh, from now until the end of this live broadcast, this is going to be only for our people tuning in live. So if you're watching this later, it won't work. But if you're watching this live, what I'd like you to do is put in the comments for me what your favorite Elvis song is and um, hashtag it with Elvis Matters. So I hope, I hope that came through all right. If somebody would um, mod, go on TCB Radio Facebook page and put in a comment for me, hint, hint, <coughs> over there. If you can pull up the TCB Radio Facebook page and put in a comment for me. Uh, everybody that puts in their favorite Elvis song and the hashtag Elvis Matters will be entered to win one of our Elvis Awareness ribbons. So if you guys will do that for me during the broadcast, I'll be looking for your song titles as we go along here. And one person, uh, one lucky winner is going to get a ribbon from us. So uh, Michael Morales is here. Yay! Kathy is here. She says, this is nice. Isn't this nice? It's great to be back talking Elvis. So um, Diana's already entered for her ribbon. Look at that. She's on the ball. She's got Love Me Tender typed in. All right, you guys. Is the odds are good tonight. There's only six of you watching live right now. So type in your song titles and you, you just might be the winner of the first Elvis Matters ribbon. Okay. So moving on, um, the big news, of course, earlier this month, the gorgeous new visitor complex, Elvis Presley Memphis is what they're calling it these days. Um, Elvis Presley's Memphis is now open. They did the big grand opening uh, the first week of March. And I found a wonderful article all about it, so I'm going to try to read that to you and also interject my own thoughts and feelings as we go along here. But basically, Elvis Presley's Memphis flows like a lifestyle retail center with the public-facing exhibit areas facing to the interior and the complex resembling the back of a shopping mall from the outside. Um, oh, I love it. Look, Debbie entered the contest. Eddie's entered a, a song title. Michael. Uh, Trina's having trouble picking just one. It's okay, Trina. We won't hold you to it. I know tomorrow uh, my, my favorite one could change. Uh, Peter Alden put in too much. <laughs> That's his favorite song title he doesn't qualify for the contest though um, <laughs> now I wanted you to put in the instructions for me for everybody to read but that's all right they got it they got it they're all entering they've got they're on the ball they got it so don't worry about it um, okay so anchoring the complex are Presley Motors which is the updated expanded automobile museum Elvis the Entertainer, which looks at the singer's career, and Graceland Soundstage, a venue for movies and live performances. They've also got a beautiful um, auditorium in the new guest house as well for, for live music and performances. On a side note, I saw that myself with my own eyes um, during the hard hat tour that I got last August. Um, but gift shops at the new visitor complex and restaurants fill in the spaces between exhibits. Now, nothing has changed for visitors in the mansion itself, but there are big changes to the buildings, a racquetball court, and a hall of trophies that adjoin the mansion. So here we go. Here's the inside scoop on the racquetball court, um, <clears throat> which that, again, as you probably know, that was a 1970s edition, and that racquetball court has been restored to its original purpose. 
The trophy room has been converted to an exhibit all about Elvis's family and friends, covering how the Presleys came to Memphis from Tupelo, Mississippi, <laughs> why he bought Graceland Mansion, and other storylines. So that's what you're getting now for your Graceland Mansion tour. That's what's changed. Okay, and then um, at the new complex, they've got space for cars, motorcycles, and other conveyances has grown to 20,000 square feet, um, where they used to just have it all stuffed in the old car museum at 10,000 square feet. So, doubled the size. A purple 1956 Cadillac Eldorado occupies a prominent corner facing the new ticketing center, and several items have, have been brought out of storage, including two ski boats, a purple 1975 Lincoln, and a 1969 Mercedes two-door coupe. Sequin capes, jumpsuits, and other performance costumes that were packed into about 1,000 square feet before in that former trophy hall have now been moved to the 20,000 square foot Elvis <laughs> the Entertainer exhibit. Now, this is where I want to interject. You have to go to the website, the tcbradio.wordpress.com website, tomorrow. By tomorrow, I'll have it up. I'm going to include a link to an amazing tour that one of the local Memphis uh, TV stations did on the day of the grand opening. And this video, you guys, is about an hour long. And I sat and watched the entire thing this afternoon. And let me tell you, it's cool because it's a media tour. So there's not a bunch of people walking around. The place is virtually empty. And you hear this guy, this reporter for this Memphis news station. He's giving you his commentary or whatever. But he takes you into this 20,000 square foot room. Elvis the Entertainer exhibit and just begins to show you the amazing scope and the amazing number of Elvis jumpsuits that are on display in this building. I mean, I was amazed and wowed. And I, in my head, I was just picturing there's all these um, companies now overseas and elsewhere that make the Elvis costumes for the Elvis tribute artists. And I just wondered in my mind, like, how many of these costumes have not been out visible to the public eye just because there was no place to see them. Well, now there is. And I'm just picturing all these costume designers going, getting a close look at, at every intricate detail on all of these suits so they can mimic those for the Elvis tribute artists. Because were before, they were probably just working from pictures and things like that. So that was just my little perspective. Um, so I'm excited to share that video with you that I found online today. So make sure you go back to the website after this broadcast and after I get it all print it up and check out that video and it gives you an idea of the, the huge space and the amount of jumpsuits that are on display. It is just amazing. Okay, so the cool thing is visitors used to have to look at the costumes from one angle from behind a glass wall and now they're in display cases that fans can walk around and view from all angles. And you really get the um, perspective of this again on that video that I'm going to give you the link to later. <clears throat> Okay, in the archives, artifacts can be examined on shelves and in drawers with little, if any, interpretive text. There is a TV with a bullet hole in it from Elvis Palm Springs House. Baseballs autographed for Elvis by legends Willie Mays and Willie McVeigh, Mc, McCovey, Willie McCovey, and a desk pen set from Colonel Tom Parker's desk featuring the RCA Victor dog nipper. So that's kind of cool. Uh, let's see. I'm looking at y'all's comments. Oh, more song titles. I love it. And Shannon signed in. And Jennifer Michelle is here. Yay! Hello! Thank you for tuning in tonight. So excited to see everybody. It's been too long. So if you're just tuning in, we are going over some of the cool stuff that can now be viewed at this um, gorgeous new complex that they've just put up. Elvis Presley's Memphis. I found a cool article that just kind of summarized everything. So I'm just reading that through to everybody. Kind of give you a um, an image of what it's going to be like. Um, when you visit or in case you can't visit, we've got it all here for you. So next up, um, the archives also include about 3,000 square feet dedicated to Elvis' stint in the Army, a story that was told only in one small display case previously. So imagine that, 3,000 square feet dedicated just to Elvis' time in the Army. Um, Elvis Presley was outfitted with all of his military gear at Fort uh, Chaffee, Arkansas. Elvis was inducted March 24th, 1958 at Memphis and spent several days at Fort Chaffee before moving on to Fort Hood, Texas on the 28th, where he would undergo six months training. He would return to his hometown March 7th, 1960 after completing his tour of duty. One fan said they just opened up a new view of Elvis. Compared to the old setting, this is going to be phenomenal. 
Um, the old Graceland Plaza, which was the early um, 1980s retail strip that housed ticketing, restaurants, gift shops, car museum, and other functions, should all be torn down by June or July as Graceland prepares for the 40th anniversary of the entertainer's death. The plaza will be replaced by landscaping and lawn, through which a new entry drive will connect the ticketing center to the mansion driveway. Priscilla Presley noted the expansion will allow fans to finally experience the great wealth of the Graceland archives. She said, you'll be able to go through and see the things we wanted to show for many, many years. Elvis loved to share things that he was able to accomplish in his lifetime, so we think this is a very exciting time for all the fans and all of us. The new complex will house the Elvis Presley Automobile Museum. Get this, this is all the stuff that's in here. The Automobile Museum, Elvis the Entertainer Career Museum, Elvis Discovery Exhibits, Elvis custom, Elvis's custom jets, as well as Elvis connected musical displays, including Mystery Train, the, same, the Sam Phillips Exhibit, and the Country Road to Rock. So those are just the names of some of the um, things that the, the huge masses of comp, different things that they're going to um, have on display in this complex. So, and I want to put everybody, uh, there's still rumors flying around about the planes being gone. They're not gone. Obviously, the, the custom jets are going to be um, housed, housed in the new complex. So fear not, the jets are not going away. Um, <laughs> Maria finally found us. Yay, I'm so glad. Thanks for being here, Maria. And Dorothy's here from Union, Missouri. Wow, thanks for tuning in, Dorothy. We appreciate it. For y'all that are just rolling in, we are um, just going through some of the cool new parts of the complex that they've just um, opened up over um, in Memphis. So there's a lot to talk about. So we're just kind of rolling through each thing individually. Remember, you can catch this video later on a replay. Um, if you missed the beginning, uh, you can go back and watch it all. I put it up on YouTube and we'll put it over on our website as well. So I'll, I'll make sure to share the link to all that as soon as I have it all completed. So, um, and I love food, you know, this body's all natural, obviously. So I'm excited about the food. So this area, the complex has also added restaurants that I'm pretty excited about, <clears throat> including a fifties themed diner and a barbecue eatery. So the first one, Vernon's Smokehouse, obviously named in honor of Elvis's father and various retail shops. The project represents the largest expansion at Graceland since it first opened to the public in 1982. Now, the other restaurant, of course, being called Gladys's Diner in honor of his mom. And when you watch that video that I'm going to give you the link to later, you get to go inside there and they actually show you around. You get to see the menu boards and the cool black and white uh, theming that's going on. It's a really cute little restaurant. They're gonna, I know in Elvis in uh, Gladys's Diner, they're serving burgers and hot dogs and things like that. So I got to look at that on that video, and you will too, as soon as I post it. So, um, And Todd Reddish is here. Billy T, what's up? Glad to see you. And Sissy's here. You guys got to check out Sissy's Facebook group. Elvis anything and everything on Facebook. She's got over 5,000 members in that group. Uh, she keeps the drama to the minimum. There's beautiful Elvis pictures posted daily, all kinds of great content. So be sure to check out Sissy's uh, group on Facebook. Thank you, Sissy, for being here. And Maria says hi to Sissy. She's probably one of your people in your group. So, so <clears throat> in closing, even though 20 million people have visited Graceland, if you haven't visited Graceland lately, you really haven't visited Graceland. So how exciting is this? This will be the year, you guys. We're all going to feel like we're visiting Graceland for the first time. So, so looking forward um, to Elvis Week in August. I'm beside myself excited. Um, and then I love this little recap. So let me read you these really quick. Five quick things to know about Elvis Presley's Memphis. In case you're just tuning in and you missed all that other cool stuff that I already shared. Um, number one, Elvis Presley's Memphis more than doubles the amount of memorabilia available for public viewing to some 375,000 items, including 20 vehicles and 88 jumpsuits, you guys. 88 <laughs> jumpsuits. It's my, it just boggles my mind. Um, that still, even with all of that, there's still at 1.1 million items in storage. Mostly, those are documents, however. Fact number two, Elvis Presley's Memphis, coupled with a 450-room resort hotel at the Guest House at Graceland, brings Graceland's employment to 520 people, not counting seasonal workers 
during peak tourist season. season. So that's good news for um, that area. Number three, it's not all about Elvis. So this is something I didn't hear about until today when I was doing all this research. Um, it's uh, an exhibit inside includes Mystery Train, the Sam Phillips story, which covers the life and times of Sun Studios' rock pioneer, the country road to rock, the Marty Stewart collection and icons, the, Elv the influence of Elvis Presley about Elvis's influences on artists and celebrities. So, <coughs> oh, excuse me. Oh, that was gross. Sorry about that. <laughs> I am getting over the flu. I apologize. Um, but the cool thing, the, when you watch the video later, you'll see there's a whole hall where they featured huge artists, people like Bruce Springsteen. Uh, I can't even remember the other ones right now. But today's artists that really attribute a lot of their career to Elvis. And it's a whole hall where you can go down and read each of their stories and why they feel that way. So it was really interesting. And I believe that is the exhibit that's called um, um, The Icons, The Influence of Elvis Presley. It's that exhibit is the one I'm talking about. So pretty cool. Number four, before Elvis Presley's Memphis was the name of Graceland's new entertainment and museum complex, it was a relatively short-lived Beale Street restaurant opened by Elvis Presley Enterprises. Since last August's groundbreaking, Graceland has deep-sixed a more ponderous title for the new complex, Elvis Past, Present, and Future. So, yeah, I mean, in the beginning they were calling it Elvis Past, Present, and Future, but I think the official name now is actually Elvis Presley's Memphis, which a lot of you probably know because you were probably in Memphis back in those years when uh, there used to be a restaurant called Elvis Presley's Memphis, which that is no more. So now that's the name of the new complex. Um, <clears throat> and Don Cordes here. Hi, Don. What's up? Thank you for tuning in tonight. Don's a destination in, in character travel, you guys. If um, you're at a loss for booking flights and hotels and things like that for your next trip to Graceland, make sure to give Destinations and Character a call. Um, I put um, Don's contact information up in the link. They are the one and only sponsor of TCB Radio. So thank you, Don, for your uh, financial support, helping us keep the lights on here at TCB Radio. We appreciate you. Next up, uh, this is the last and final top five facts you need to know about Elvis Presley's Graceland. The cost has gone up to see everything Graceland has to offer. An adult ticket for a mansion tour and access to Elvis Presley's Memphis and Elvis airplanes is now $62.50 compared with $47.50 a year ago. So what is that? $47.57. That's less than $20 increase, but still, it's an increase. Um, if you just want to see the mansion only, that ticket price remains the same. It is still just $38.75 um, to go through Graceland Mansion. Okay? And so that means you are now up to date on Elvis Presley's Memphis. If you haven't had a chance to visit or look it up or read all the information or dig through everything like I did today, um, you should still be up to date. So I'm just so excited. I was able to bring you all this cool information in one spot. Um, and next up, our next subject for tonight, of course, now posted to our website at tcbradio.wordpress.com is complete details and information, even a promo video, which I'm about to show you, all about how to get tickets to Marion Cox's 40th anniversary Elvis Presley Memorial Dinner happening in Memphis, Tennessee on Friday, August 11th at the historic Peabody Hotel. Um, and I'm going to show you that video um, at the end here. But I want to let you know, even if you can't come to Memphis, if you're in Germany or if you're watching from Australia or all the different places in the world where you guys watch us from and you can't make it to Memphis on Friday, August 11th, you can still participate and feel like you're a part of this dinner. Here's how. We want you to consider a sponsorship at the gold, silver, or bronze level. Now, sponsorships are a great idea for any individual or business, but especially a fun option for Elvis fan clubs and Elvis tribute artists. Here's how the sponsorships work. You can get a gold level at $100. This includes a t-shirt design just for the dinner by Betty Harper, a 2018 calendar made by Sue Manusak in your name on the program booklet. Silver level is $50 and includes the calendar and your name in the program booklet. Bronze is $25 and includes your name in the program booklet. Now remember, um, 
Elvis, the Elvis Presley Memorial Charity Dinner put on by uh, Marion Cock is all in the name of charity. She donates tons and tons and tons of money to charity from these dinners every year. So just know that when you spend that money, it's going for a great cause. Um, Sponsoring gift baskets is another great option for attendees, and even if you can't come, these baskets are being created to auction off at the dinner in order to raise even more money for charity. Suggested donations to get a basket created is $100 to around $300 each. Your name will be placed on the basket description as the sponsor. So that is exciting. And with that, I want to pull up the little promo video that we have for um, <clears throat> the charity dinner to kind of give you an idea and a feel of what this evening is going to be like. Um, our wonderful lady, Lori, that supports Mary and supports this dinner, she puts these videos together and um, does such a phenomenal job. And I just wanted to show you this, you guys. She made this one to promote this year's dinner. So check it out. I'm going to put it on the screen for you right now. So it kind of just gives you a, a feel of what the night's going to be like. Uh, people dress nice, uh, celebrities, speakers, music, so much more. So I hope you'll join us. Um, little bonus, it's going to be our very first ever TCB Radio official meetup. Um, I bought tickets for myself and for Peter, and I'm about to buy Kimber's ticket as well. So the three of us will be there to meet and greet with you. Um, if you happen to be coming to the dinner, we're kind of using that as our first official meetup. So I hope you will join us. Get your ticket. If you can't get a ticket and you can't come, Send some money, be a sponsor, get your name in the program, why not? Um, you know, that's like five cups of coffee at Starbucks to get that bronze level. No big deal. Do it. Just do it. Um, and we'll put a link again in the show notes so you can get all the information on how to get the tickets and how to submit your sponsorship money if you want to do that. That will be on the website very soon. So watch for the links to all that I'm going to put together for you. Hi, Judy Smith. Thank you for being here all the way from the Memphis, Tennessee uh, my dear friend, my girl, that it's on the grounds out there. I love seeing your Facebook posts, and thank you for keeping us up to date. We appreciate you. And Jack Zedzi of Curtain Call Entertainment is here tonight. Thank you, Jack. Thanks for tuning in to our little Elvis show. Last and not, and not least, I want to let everybody know that April 8th is the next meeting of the Elvis Presley Fan Club of Orlando, located on International Drive at the Lucky Leprechaun Irish Pub. Mark your calendar if you're in the Orlando area. Remember, if you have an official Elvis Fan Club, you can send me the dates and locations of your upcoming meetings, and I will mention you on TCB Radio. So if you don't want to do it, call your president of your fan club and just say, hey, I know this way we can get some free promotion for the fan club um, and send them my emails, you know, Facebook me, let me know, I can get in contact with them and we will let everybody know about your um, meetings coming up of your Elvis fan club that's local to your area. And with that, it is just about eight o'clock on the dot. I want to thank you all so much uh, from the bottom of my heart for uh, tuning into TCB Radio Live. <clears throat> Did we have an announcement about Chuck Berry prepared? Um, Peter Alden wanted me to mention to you uh, that the wonderful, amazing Chuck Berry passed away earlier this week. And uh, so our thoughts and prayers are with his family and friends, a true rock and roll legend and icon. We've lost another one, you guys. It's uh, 
it's a sad thing, but um, we're, we appreciate the gift that he was to the world. And um, he lived to a ripe old age. God bless him. So good for him. <laughs> but uh, with that, I'll go ahead and sign off. Remember to tune in next week uh, to participate live in the conversation. And uh, be on the lookout. I'm going to be notifying the winner of our uh, first Elvis Awareness Ribbon very soon. Thank you all for participating in the game. Uh, Maria wants to know, how do we get those ribbons? Okay, so... If you don't win one this week, stay tuned to the Facebook page. I'm coming up with all kinds of great ideas of how you can win them, get them, all that kind of stuff. I will let you know I'm going to um, come up with some stuff, so be on the lookout for that. I want everybody to be able to win one that wants one, so we will work on some cool ideas. Um, so we'll see you guys on Tuesday. We'll be back with more Elvis news, so tune in for that and so much more. Thank you for being here with me tonight, and uh, we'll talk to you real soon. Thank you so much. See you Tuesday.